Today on Ham Radio Q&A, my list of holiday gift ideas. This year, they're all made in the USA, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. The holiday season is upon us. Thanksgiving weekend typically signals the start of the Christmas shopping season, but it seems like every year that start gets earlier and earlier. If you have a ham radio friend or a significant other on your shopping list, it might be difficult to find that perfect gift. That's why every year I come out with my ham radio shopping list. These are gift items that I have found interesting and will be appealing to most any ham radio operator. This year, my holiday gift features products that are made or assembled in the USA. I know we've seen in the news about supply chain issues and imported products sitting on the ships out at the ports, and I think now more than ever, we need to focus our support on businesses that manufacture their products in the USA. Of course, they may rely on foreign components, that's a side effect of our global economy. But if the final assembly is in the good old USA, I'm fine with that. Most of these gift ideas have been used and tested by me. Several of them have been featured in previous videos. There are a few I haven't had experience with yet, but um, I've received favorable reviews from others and have had a positive experience with them. So I feel good about recommending them. Links to all of these products are on the video descriptions below. Starting off the list is the Field Notes uh, Steno Book. I like to use steno books for logging contacts and jotting down notes. They are easy to use in the field because they are of a convenient size and they usually have a nice hard cover. The field note steno book takes it up to the next level with heavy chipboard covers on the front and the back and a heavy duty spiral bind. The pages are thicker and they're not going to bleed through and you can write on really both sides of the page easily and still read things. Next up. Morse code is seeing a resurgence in the amateur radio field. The code requirements for testing was dropped almost 15 years ago, but there is still a tremendous amount of activity in the mode, and more and more new hams are getting started with it. CW Morris produces inexpensive, well-designed keys that are perfect for the ham starting out with CW. In fact, they are recommended starter key by the Long Island CW Club. They come in a variety of colors and are well suited in the shack or the field. You can find them at cwmorris.us. I've tested quite a few antennas this past summer. Chameleon sent me a bunch to try out, and frankly, all of, their of all of their designs, there is one that I keep coming back to, and that's the Chameleon LEFs, or Lightweight N-Fed System. This is an N-Fed half-wave antenna featuring a 49 to 1 integrated transformer and 66 feet of wire. In most instances, it will do 10 through 40 meters without a tuner. And I've used it um, with a tuner on 80 meters. Now it may not be the most inexpensive half wave antenna on the market, but it's probably the most rugged. Links to it are in the video description. Speaking of antennas, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the KB9 VBR J-Pole and Slim Jim antennas. My most popular model is, is of course the two meter J-Pole, but I carry antennas in a, a variety of frequencies from six meters all the way up to 70 centimeters and the GMRS band. The two meter J-Pole antenna makes a great gift for the new ham. And my GMRS antennas like this one here have become extremely popular. Moving on. I know in the last year, there have been a lot of new uh, hams that have gotten their license. A common question of the fledgling amateur radio operator is how do I protect my equipment from lightning strikes? Well, lightning protection can be difficult, but the ARRL's new edition of grounding and bonding will send you on the right path. I have the first edition here, but the recently released second edition has been updated with the latest best practices and electrical code changes. It is an invaluable resource to those putting together a home radio shack. I'm a big fan of Heil Sound products. I've used their microphones for years on my older ICOM rig. 
Recently, I purchased the BM17 headset to use on my Yesus. Uh, the BM17 is comfortable, portable, and I think it looks good in its high-vis yellow color. HiO products are assembled and tested in Fairview Heights, Illinois, and they stand behind their products with service and support. Just remember, when you purchase a HiO microphone, that they produce separate versions for ICOM transceivers as they require a slightly different microphone element. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, solar power as I dove down that rabbit hole this past year. Finding US made solar products is very difficult, but there are a few domestic pr producers of residential and portable solar equipment. First off is the DIY Solar For You charge controller. Uh, this MPPT or Maximum Power Point Tracking charge controller is rugged and highly efficient. It also is RFI silent, so you're not going to hear any hash on the HF bands while it is operating, which is really a common issue with the inexpensive MPPT charge controllers. I've used one in my camping trailer for the past summer and it has stood up to the rigors of mobile operation. You'll find it on their website. Links are in the description below. Next are solar panels. I must admit that the panels on my trailer are foreign produced, but there is a highly regarded company that produces US made solar products, Zamp Solar. Their Obsidian line of portable panels look great and pack down into small packages. Uh, the 100 watt version will serve most HAM's portable power needs and is designed to plug into your existing solar system. So it doesn't come with a charge controller. That really isn't a bad thing as most portable panels on the market really do skimp on the controller so you can customize your solar system for maximum performance. Now, what would an amateur radio gift list be if it didn't include a transceiver? Since we're talking about US made products, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the gold standard of the amateur radio world, the Elecraft. Elecraft is one of those com companies that sets the pace for others to follow and their equipment is designed and built in the USA. I know that I'd, I would love to see their KX3 uh, QRP portable transceiver under the tree this year. Finally, I want to mention a few gifts that you can give to others. While we often consider things that we would like to receive, we should remember that this is the season of giving and we should support the activities and causes that are meaningful to us. This last year, I've been a big participant in the Parks on the Air program, and I found a lot of value in using the online service qsomap.org to visualize my Parks on the Air contacts. Both of these organizations are getting a donation from me, and I encourage you, if you use and value them, to do the same. So there you go. Did I miss something, or is there something else that you'd like to see under the tree? What's your favorite US-made product, amateur radio product? Please leave it in the comments below. You may also want to check out some of our previous holiday gift guides for more ham radio gift ideas, and links to everything in this video are in the description below or on my blog at www.jpol-intel.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Support us on Patreon to help keep the mission alive. Give us that thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, especially if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day and 73.